Get more test cards up, yeah. So we'll let that run for a few seconds. I'll let YouTube boot it until people have gone live. Hello, Terry's gone now. He's, he's done a runner. Is he? <laughs> Here he is. He's back now. There you go, you're happy now. No, this not. They're saying they can hear me. Why can they hear me? Thirty second delay. Not on you. you. You will be in real time, but when that goes to them, that'll be proper. evening all welcome thank you very much for coming over for another friday night live um nice to see you all in the chat and thanks for coming and join us and tonight we have two for the price of one special guest airworms so let's bring them in so here they are we have pat carroll and andrew hall welcome guys thank you very much for joining us and as good and evening. as always we have brian and terry joining us thank you guys for coming over and helping us out good evening people so good evening so as um, you guys may or may not know, Pat and Andrew are part of um, Meet the Woodturner, and they're going to be talking about that quite a bit tonight because that's coming tomorrow. No, is it next Saturday? Next Saturday yeah, and next Sunday. Next Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. So they're going to talk about a bit about that. They've got some pieces to show us as well, which is very interesting. And also, as always, if you guys have got any questions, chuck them in the chat, and Brian and Terry or Andrew and Pat will pick up the question. And we'll answer the question if we can. So, as you know, Pat and Andy, or Andrew, sorry, have been on the circuit for many years. Both very knowledgeable turners. So, I'm sure there's not much they don't know. So, if you've got those questions, make sure you ask them. So, I am just, I'll stick to you guys in the background for a little bit. I am going to be turning just something simple. A simple, um, God, it's a bit bright there. I don't know why it's so bright. That is That's very no new lights you put up, Steve. Yeah, it is, isn't it? <laughs> Um, so I've got a piece of, um, I don't know what it is. I think it's a piece of cherry. I'm not hundred percent sure, but we'll find out when I turn it. And I think it's got a little bit of spalting in it as well from what I can see on the end. Um, so I'm going to just turn a basic bud vase. As always, we're not here for me. We're here to talk about, uh, Pat and Andrew, letting us know what they got going on, what they've been doing, how they got into it, this and that and the other. So like I say, if you guys have got questions, make sure you check, uh, chuck it in. Um, Mark saying I don't sound like I'm on my headset. Let's have a look. Sounds okay to me. Yeah, I am on my headset. So, right. So, I'll start turning this. I'll rough round this, and then uh, you guys can keep an eye on the chat. Welcome everybody in. Yeah, I'm and we'll going go to quickly there. run through the participants list. So, Ken would normally just welcome everybody in, but I'll, I'll do the participants list quickly um, because there are 67 people watching, and I'll probably never get everybody. So, we have Andrew Hall. 
Surprise, surprise, Andre, you're here. Hey, Barry Cherry, Barry from Wood Creations, Brian Watkins, Chris Granville, Danny Boy, uh, Dazira Hunter, Doug Miller from Woodspun Round, Fred Gulliver, Grumper Jim, the wood turner, uh, Robert from Hodgepodge, Jennifer Craft Creations, uh, Joe Senior, the voice of an angel, and Kristen Gray Photography, stop laughing, Terry. <laughs> Mark Lejean, the wood turner's in. <laughs> uh, Michelle Usby's in, Michael Doyle, uh, our good friend Pat as well, he's here. Uh, Paul Hewton, the uh, Grisby Turner, Paul Kavanagh, Paul Lockwood, Roy the Boy, Shane Hurst, uh, Terry Barlett, uh, Lewis Clondick Kirkman, Todd at Glencoe Works, uh, Wayne Wood Turner, Wee Val, all the way from Scotland, uh, Heidi Woodshed, um, Woodward by Paul and Wood Turner by Barry. That's a participant's list. Uh, that's not 70 names by any means. So if I haven't read your name out, guys, and you want to shout out, just stick your name in the bottom of the chat. And uh, we'll see how it goes. And if you have any questions for either Pat or Andrew, we can just about see Andrew. We can just see the top of your head, Andrew. You want to tilt your camera down just a little bit so we can see you a bit better? He's lounging on the sofa there. <laughs> <laughs> I see there's a question any from questions Joe. Any questions in the chat there, guys, and we'll see how we go. There was a question from oh. Joe, I see. No, no, there's always a question from Joe. Where is it? Where did I see it? Yeah, I answered yep. Joe in the chat box there, Steve. So. Oh, okay. All right, so sometimes uh, people uh, don't actually read the chat, so if, if there's a question, okay. answer the question verbally rather than just type it the chat. Well, when Andrew was setting up, I'll answer it. Then Joe wanted to know where did it all start. Well, I work as a builder or carpenter, so I just explored another avenue of woodwork. And I found one that was going to cost a solid portion, as we all know. So once I made shavings for the first time, the bug had bitten and I was addicted. So that's my case of story into good things. It's a terrible, terrible bug, I have to say. So, yeah. What about you, Andrew? How did you get started? Well, I started when I was 14 and at that school. Was no, it's a few years ago, that one, Brian. It was when I was at school, and I had a great woodwork teacher, Mr. Walker, and he had a couple of graduate years in this class, so I did woodwork at school. I took last, I left school, and then during my time as a joiner, I had odd times where we made things on the lathe, mainly for pattern making and handles. And then 20 years ago, I rekindled sort of the love of wood turning. Had some lessons with Jimmy Close and decided to uh, go on to the demonstration circuit and started teaching. Excellent. Nice. Good. Steve is saying, the, Susie's saying that your uh, audio for your, from your lathe is really loud. Yeah, Paul Lewis from Paul Lewis is just saying uh, uh, video and audio seems a lot poorer tonight, certainly not the normal level, Steve. Can you just have a quick check of that? Yeah, I'll check, check the uh, filter. Ryan's not muted. I can hear him. Yeah, again, yeah. right, Terry. That, that's just enough of that. Find <laughs> the video quality and the, the audio on my computer seems great. Right, try that. I'll put noise cancellation in. I've upped the noise cancellation, so we'll try that. Testing one, two, three. I well, can't hear the left call now. Can you, sp can you sp speak there, Steve? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah we can hear you. Yeah, that's good. So we've just cancelled the woodworking noise. So now these two guys that we've got as guests, Andrew and Pat, are going to have to entertain us now. So we don't have to. Pat has some questions there. Oh, Pat. That's some questions. Oh, no, that was Pat. Answer the question. If I miss a question, Brian, direct it to me. Just show it out, please. I will indeed, sir. Gavin Doherty has just joined us. So we're nearly round. Or, that's Doherty. D-O-U-G-H-T-Y. Doherty. Sorry, Gavin. Joe, Joe Senior has another question there. Is there something they would like to do that they haven't already? I have about four million projects I want to do. So <laughs> um, yeah, it mainly involves more holoforms and just a combination of a few things. One that I'm Planning on working on it won't be this year. I'd imagine is a uh, glass and woodwork. If I can combine it, I've just recently bought a kiln. Ooh, 
that'd be interesting. Space. That'd, that'd be interesting. That'll be a while down the road. Maybe I'll give up on turning and go into the glass. I don't think it's any cheaper though. That's a good question, that Joe. I think for me, I'm hoping to start and combine a little bit of chainsaw carving with wood turning. Nice one. Hmm. That'd be interesting. Yeah, it's something I fancied doing for a long time. And um, I actually, I've ordered a, a carving bar today for me, electric chainsaw. And I, I thought, oh, it's just a simple exercise. You go and just buy a carving bar for your chainsaw and that'll be fine. But actually, when I got there, not only do you have to buy a carving bar, you've got to buy a new sprocket. Yeah. You've got to buy a couple of this to join the sprocket to the, the drive. So And they didn't have them in stock, so anyhow, I've ordered them. And uh, 115 pound later. Yeah. <laughs> sounds, sounds very much like wood turning, that, doesn't it? It is. It is. <laughs> yeah. There's always something new. There's always a yeah. new gadget yeah. or well, something you have to add on. We are teleholics, Brian. We can't help ourselves. Yeah, that's absolutely <laughs> right, Andrew. <laughs> There's a good question in there from Paul Cabinet. You answer this one first, Andrew. What's the most useless thing you bought for wood turning? <laughs> most useless thing I bought for wood turning? Blimey. I think it's probably a, it's like a, a ball gouge that was at an angle of 30 degrees that were brought out oh, many years ago and it was designed to undercut bowls and I could never get the hang of it. I mean, I got enough diggings as it is, but this was guaranteed a dig in every single time. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we still seem to have a problem with sound, Steve. Yeah, I just uh, say that. We have just put in the <laughs> list is still drowning out the earworms. The tool work a terrible is problem with the internet here, so I'm, I might not have to, I might have to leave. It oh, just mate. keeps keeps locking and dropping. All right, Terry. Ten seconds. Let's have a look. The most useless thing I ever bought was a cheap blade. And anybody that buys a cheap blade, I can guarantee you it's a useless yeah. item. Yeah, that's that's good. That's, yeah. If you buy a cheap blade, you have a paperweight. If you buy the most expensive you can afford and you don't like it, you can sell it and get money back for it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah. yeah. Don't buy cheap, crappy second, well, second hand blades are fine if they're a good quality and good nick, but not some of these uh, paperweights, as I call them. The Yorkshire get is in. Hi, Glenn. Glenn. Right. So, Senior. Are. I'm so going to I'll leave the call before it drops again. It keeps dropping out, okay? All right, Terry. All right, mate. Cheers. Okay, Sorry, Terry. Mate. See you later, mate. I'll watch Catch you on you. YouTube. Catch you after a while. Take care. Bye. So what are you doing now, uh, Steve? I'm trying to put a noise yeah. suppression. All right. So the cat. So just hold on. I get man guys in the in the uh, chat. There, we'll be with you shortly. We're trying to sort out a technical issue. There's somebody here saying can't hear the earworms while Steve's turning. Yeah, we're just uh, trying to sort. Steve's trying to sort that out, right. Andrew. Right. These sure. are the joys of demonstrating online. Absolutely. Jennifer's Crafting Creations has joined us. Good afternoon or good evening, Jennifer. Woodwizardry by Colin says, on my telly, the sound sounds sound is fine. You can still hear the lathe, but you can't hear the earworms okay. Hmm. Right. Okay. Some people are getting it bad, and some people are. Right, so no. I've I've up to see I've up the the noise suppression as high as I dare push it. Okay. So let's try that. Well, we can all hear each other in here on Skype, and there's only one stream technically coming out of Skype, so it has That's to correct. Have to you, Stephen, I'm afraid. Yeah, no, no, no. This I don't normally have this problem, but when I changed my motherboard the other day, I lost all my um, OBS settings, so I had to re-put them all back in. Ah, okay. So Roy the boy is asking both of you guys how long have you been coming? Can't answer that question already, but Well I I started around two thousand and one, two thousand and two. Uh, and but I've had more years not turning than actually turning, unfortunately, due to work and one thing and another and life in general. Um missed a lot of years over different things, building homes that I was moving into and one thing and another. So yeah. Not as much as I'd like to. I think constantly for about the last 20 years. Yeah. And you do this full time now, Andrew. That's all, that's all you do. You kind of... I, I have... You have another job as, as well. 
for the last 17 years I've been full time. Before that, I taught in apprentices, carpentry, and joinery in colleges. Okay. Wood, wood turning for the last 20 years full time. And, uh, I'm just on the, the verge of retirement now. And Ben Jamming is asking, um, do you two buy your timber or source and harvest it yourself? After you, Andrew. Both. Both. It depends. I mean, at the moment, I'm harvesting an awful lot of timber myself because there is such a lot of wind-blown timber in the area. And to, even today... I've brought home four trailer loads of ash. Yes. And the, basically what happened was where we, when we had that storm, the ash just, there was quite a number of trees blew down. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've been harvesting it today. And I've just been, the way I harvested I used to use petrol chainsaws, but I've just bought a, a DeWalt cordless. Yep. I'm just amazed at how powerful that saw is. How good it is, yeah. Yeah, I've actually put a YouTube up, Brian, on yep. unboxing it and using it on my YouTube channel. Okay. Uh, really, it's it's just amazing. So if anybody's thinking about getting a cordless, check them out. And I don't I actually, work, yeah. I don't work for them. <laughs> I actually have a little Ryobi one. Yeah. One of good. the uh, eighteen volt one system ones, and it's pretty right. powerful too. Yeah. It doesn't seem to bind up very much. Very as long as you keep, the, if you keep the blade sharp, that's the most important thing, I suppose, eh? Yeah, yeah. Um, I had a question, about, and I've uh, What about you, Pat? Where do you harvest? Do you harvest? Or? Well, any wood that I get here in Ireland, I pay through the nose for it, but I do have a source in the UK, in Manchester, and I can get any amount of timber, any size, any shape, any form, any timber that's available for free. But with the cost of bringing my rather large van to the UK, um, it costs a little bit much. So I try to tie it in with a demo or a visit, whatever. So yes, it, it works out that way for me. That my last batches of wood have come over the UK. Not as good as the Irish timber, but I make do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, you know when needs <laughs> must. <laughs> Robert from Hot Toys Woodwork says, uh, "Question: uh, Do we get to hear Andrew play his bow guitar tonight?" You would have done if I could have shared the screen, but uh, <sighs> for some reason I can't share the screen on the uh, iPad. But I did have a little video there. So if you want, the best thing to do if you want to have a listen, I've got some YouTube's. Have a look on the YouTube channel. There's quite a few ball turning, and there's also Tony there, the wooden tops, Tony Chapel singing as well. What's your YouTube channel called, Andrew? It's, it's just Andrew Hall Wood Turner. There's a question there about Maker Central from the Blue Light Turner's workshop. Are you both going or demoing at Maker Central? Well, I got an invite to demonstrate that and a bit of work around it, but unfortunately, I will, fortunately, I will be in the USA. So well, it would have been nice to go over to that too. I'm actually retiring from live demonstrations. So I won't be demonstrating any more live. But you will be in Harrogate this year, Andrew. I'll be at Harrogate, but I'll be there for the first time in 12 years as a spectator. Is there a, is there a reason why you're retiring from live demos, Andrew? Or just yeah, had enough I, of them? I just, I just want to retire. That's fair he's, enough. A, he's a wood turner, Steve. He's made his money. Well, this is true. <laughs> this is true. Yeah, he's on oh. his second million, aren't you, Andrew? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, he stopped with four, did he? <laughs> yeah, seriously, Ray. You're still getting complaints about your sound, I'm afraid, Steve. Am I? Yep, we are. Yep. Yeah. That's going through my Jabra. It's definitely going through the Jabra headset. Can, can oh, people hear us or us. here now? Because I know that they said they couldn't hear us before. If you can, can you just pop it in the chat box that you can hear up here? Is it better or worse? Because I've, I've upped it. I can't up the gain too much because you won't hear what I'm saying. If Mind you, it doesn't really matter about me, I don't suppose. We can hear yeah, you. Yeah. yeah, we can We can hear it fine. So it's, well, we're it's hearing, coming through. We're hearing in Skype. It's a different... Are, is, yeah. is, is the noise really loud for you, guys? I can't hear it. We can't hear anything at all, Steve, from the tunneling. No, I can just hear you. 
That's strange because I've got all my cameras are muted. Very, very strange. There's somebody really need to open it, Jordan. All the cameras are muted, I think. Let me just double check all my cameras. So, uh, somebody in the chat would like to tell me what is actually wrong with the sound, guys. Just one person tell me. Somebody says it's right. worse. You're we can't hear the guests, but you, but we can hear you when you're turning, Steve. Yeah, that's Mark. So that's noise cancellation. Is cancelling out us because we're in the background. Says, so of course, we can't the hear the guests, but, you, but we can hear you when you're turning, Steve. Now, now we've got feedback, Steve. That's not me. So that's noise cancellation. Did you come in on another device there, Andrew? Andrew turned on YouTube, I think, is what that was. So there's people are saying for Steve to turn his mic down. And then can you increase the input then, Steve, if you do that? I can turn my mic down. You uh, lower your yeah. mic and increase your input into YouTube. So Wayne has said, that you, Steve, you're very loud and the earworms are very quiet and, and the lathe is loud. All right, let's try that then. I've turned it down. I've turned it's not it, better anybody. I've, I've yeah, turned try it turning down. something now, Steve. I've turned it down by half. Turn my mic down by half. Well, let's wait 20 seconds and see. And Mark has said we can hear every noise from the PC, all the notifications, etc., etc. I, I always find it interesting to see what devices people are having problems with. Um, and usually it tends to be the same device when there's a lot of problems on it or people's band. Yep. Right, let me just try something, and if I can hear the notifications. Paul. Yeah, Paul Cavanagh says it sounds like there's a Bluetooth device disconnecting periodically. And we get the Bluetooth bing thing. You know, when you unplug a USB. All right, what's that like? Is that better? Archie See, says, I, I, I can sound okay, sounds much better. Grandpa Jim, better. See what's that yeah. like? See what that like? So I think we should run with that just for a matter of time and see how we go. You need to wait your 20 second delay to, for your response yeah. once you move it. So we better not stop talking just in case. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll just mute it. I'll just mute it. I've gone completely. <laughs> I've just muted the iPod and listened to the YouTube. Yep. And the YouTube sounds fine to me. I okay. can hear you clearly, Pat. So, um, well, Roy the Boy is now saying he can hear everyone. Um, there we go. And the sound is much better, so I think we're fixed now, Steve. Thank God for that. Sounds like normal now, so Mark says sounds like normal, so we're good. Let's get back yeah. to the questions, guys. There's, there's not a word about that lovely mallet that Steve is making. Mallet? Thanks for that <laughs> mallet. <laughs> uh, and Ben Talman says it's much better but Brian's accent is still weird so. oh, <laughs> get lost Ben I actually had that in an email from Meet the Woodturner one night somebody asked me was there anything I could do about my accent <laughs> so I responded and I told him I put a little red button in the bottom right hand corner for you next meeting you attend just click that and your problem will be solved yeah, well done, mate. Well done. Anybody doesn't Good know answer. Answer. Zoom, that's the leave button. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Doyle, There's a red button on my telephone, I just press that. Mike Doyle, the only voices I have problems with are in my head. <laughs> well, we know this, Mike, that's why you're here. Yeah. <laughs> so what took you, Andrew, what took you into making uh, the musical instruments? We were watching, in 2016, we were watching C6 Steve on Jules Holland on the New Year's Eve Hootenier. Hootenanny. Uh, Hootenanny, is that it? Yeah, uh, Hootenanny, Steve, yeah. And Steve, play, he, he played the um, cigar box guitar with three strings. Oh, um, yeah, I've seen that. And then I thought, you know what, it would be nice if I could make an instrument on the lathe it was all made on the lathe, so I thought, bowl for the body, spindle for the neck, join the two together, put a pick up on it, and then have a go. And that's where it all evolved. And, so, and it worked. Yeah. yeah, and at the moment, I, I'm really excited with the one I'm making at the minute. It's a collaborative between myself and Pat. And Pat's done his magic mm -hmm. with his rust 
combination. All oh, right, okay. And uh, so I'm just figuring out how to seal it. We've got a we've got a little bit of a a, a challenge because the sealer that you would normally get isn't due in for about twelve to fifteen weeks. Okay. So I'm trying to think of a way of being able to seal it so that I can get it finished off. And uh, it's um, it's a bit of a challenge. That's a nice shape, oh. that bud vase, Steve. It's coming on nicely. Thank you. Just trying to get that a little bit more swooped so, in there. Yeah, it looks so, nice. So Todd from Grand Clove Woodworks uh, has a, a, asked another question. He says, what's your favourite type of wood to tongue? Well, my my go ahead, Andrew. Yeah. Sorry, Pat, you go. Well, uh, my, my typed into the chat box was free wood, but um, for the work that I do, I like sycamore. It works best for the type of my erosion type stuff. It works best for me. Nice, clean sycamore. I like ash. I do. Yeah. I, I, I like both of those timbers, and sycamore yeah. and ash. Sycamore I like because the colour's easy. And ash has some beautiful grey and you yeah. can do a lot with ash or burning and things like that too. The best wood for the, the blues balls I've found is tulip wood or sapili for the acoustics. Okay. All right. But neither of them are that great to turn. TJ Tony says, uh, is asking you, Pat, who's on who's next on Meet the Wood Turner? Um we have to just finalise it, so um, it could. We're hoping it'll be Mr. Carol Byrne. Some people will uh, know who Carol is, but if you've ever been on Record Power and a lot of these events, you will hear a voice in the background, the eye in the sky. We call Carol, so it will be Carol. So he's a uh, he turns on a huge monster. What can are you laid? And he has a lot of history and wood turning, but. In wood in general, and it'll be really interesting. So that, hopefully that will all go ahead. But as I said, I'm going to be away for a little while, so the schedule is going to be disrupted. But I'll be sending out emails anyway. So I'll just paste, there's a, a link in the chat there. It says meetthewoodturner.com, schedule, forward slash schedule. You can pop over there and have a look at Pat's website there, guys. That's for Meet the Wood Turner, the live event that's on That's next the live Saturday, event, yeah. Sunday. You won't yep. see an actual schedule for the meetings because no. that means there's no pressure on the guests to be there and then there's no alterations because people know two weeks ahead who's coming on and I think that's enough notice for anybody. And then if it changes, nobody knows of any disruptions. So it just works out fine that way. But I do have a very extensive list to keep me going for a few years to come if this keeps running. So that's let's good. see what happens. Change camera out. Um, there was another question about the tool that I use for the piercing. It's a forward and professional tool. The number escapes me, KMH10 something or other. If you go to Stewart at Metal Clay um, and look up the forward and range there, the micro motors, that's the one that I use. I actually do have a kind of an unboxing thing. I think it's on YouTube. If you go to Pat Carroll Wood Turning on YouTube, you will find it there. There's a couple of, uh, there's one on dependent motors as well. It is uh, one of the little bit more expensive machines, but it's very versatile and it's very good. Uh, Douglas Mongan has just joined us. Good evening, Douglas. Hi, Douglas. We've got 79 people watching. Yeah, I hope we can put people off with the bad sound. Uh, well, the rugby's on tonight, you know. Oh, Wales. well, that's what it is then. Wales uh, it's only France. It's only France and Wales, though. Once you don't have to give refunds, Steve, you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, but I feel bad if I give a bad performance. Uh, look, the, it's in the hand of the tech gods, most of these things. I think at this point, most people understand. Yeah. There's not so much you can do. <laughs> Mine, that looks a nice uh, little stream deck um, unit that you've got there, Steve. I see you're protecting that nicely. Yeah, I 3D printed that. Yeah? Yeah. It looks great. All right, let's get this drilled. Oh, he does, a, he, he does a whole lot of 3D printing stuff. Andrew knows he's got some of the chuck buddies. I have. Yeah, uh, uh, I bought some. I've got uh, back, half yeah. a dozen and it's tidied all my chucks up nicely. Yeah, they're a good bit of cat, I have to say. Mm -hmm. 
And Ben Jammer wants to know, is why is Pat always turning resin? I was hoping to avoid that one, Brian. No, 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 no. You don't get away that easy. <laughs> I, see, I see Mike Doyle coming in on that. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a little bit adverse to turning resin. A lot of people know that. I, I've tried it a couple of times and it's, I don't know. It's, you know, I'd rather eat cake than cardboard and resin <laughs> yeah. compared to wood for me is just, I'm sorry. There's, there's no feel to it. Um, and I have to say, like, uh, we did have uh, Keith Lackner on Meet the Wood Turner. His work is absolutely amazing with the resin and the colours. Our good friend Helen Bailey, her pendants and yep. some of the stuff that she makes with the resin and Emma. So many people make nice stuff. It's just not my cup of tea. Yeah, um, mine neither. I'm still finding bits of it around my workshop because Helen did her come over here and recorded her demonstrations for next week. And she only turned resin pendants. I had to turn one myself. It was part of the deal. But uh, I'm still finding bits of resin amongst the huge amount of shavings. It's just you gross. Mean she, you mean she Helen bullied into it, did she? Oh, yeah, without a doubt. I get bullied into all these things. <laughs> yeah. Well, the only resin that I've turned is some dicky bow ties. Um, again, like you, Pat. I don't like the smell. I don't like the chips. I don't like the... It's just horrible. It just sticks yeah. to you. I've turned a few pens and I, I didn't like it either. So. Yeah. Well, like Steve, I said, Steve, Steve does it. Steve turns a bit of resin. But again, there's people that they can't get wood and maybe they buy the, the resin blanks or whatever because of availability. Fine. You know, again, it was whatever you enjoy yeah. yourself. So I'm not knocking anybody else doing it. It's just not my cup of tea. That's no, how I started making resin. Fine. It's an expensive enough part of this when you go into all these pressure pots and all the different, uh, and I'd imagine the resin is not cheap either. So uh, The resin's got really expensive now. Well, it's going to get worse, I'd imagine, with the way things are. Yep. It's just another one of those famous rubber holes that wood tunnel has. You know, fall down it. Oh, yeah. I bought some shaving brush handles, and, or shaving brush handle blanks. Yes. And they were just the right size for the dicky bow ties. But again, they were very chippy to turn the acrylic. But mm. they look nice, mind, when you when you actually sand them up. But I, I realised that the only way you could get a decent finish was to use the um, micro mesh and take it right the way down and use it in conjunction with water. Is that how you normally do your resins? No, I, um, I sand mine up to 600 grit, then Yorkshire grit, my uh, original, then Yorkshire grit, my graphine, and then depending, right. and then depending on how, how far you want to go, you go over with um, like a real fine cut and paste. Yeah. But it depends yeah. on how, 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 how much of a shine you really want. Yeah. I know I did use, on some of them I tried some um, tea cut. And yeah, it worked quite Yeah, Brian yep. uses that. I use that yeah. T-cut scratch from scratch from. Yeah, it did it, it work quite well actually. Yep, it does. Yep, I use that after the Yorkshire grit original right. microfine and then T-cut. I've not tried the Yorkshire grit before. Oh, good you stuff. Should. You should. Mm -hmm. Works treat. It's good. I like it anyway. Mm -hmm. um, if you're interested in the score in the rugby, it's uh, Wales are getting beat ten three. Oh dear. Oh, there, oh dear. Right, so That's sand okay. that up, sand it up then. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't hear the word about that resin conversation. I think my microphone was off. Your microphone was broken, wasn't it? Uh, <laughs> so yeah, something was broken there. Sorry about that. <laughs> you don't miss much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, either love it or hate it. Oops. Oh no, don't drop uh -huh. it down there. What have you done now? No, I dropped the, the uh, Abronet down the extraction. Steve has a habit of dropping stuff, guys. Just, he's not called Sir Drop a lot for nothing. <laughs> Lucky, it's not, the exp it's not the expensive stuff anyway, Steve. It's only Abronet. Yeah, it's all right. It's, yeah, it's only Abronet. <laughs> you may get it's a bit, only Abronet, Abronet, yeah. bit of water <laughs> what, mesh. What grid do you normally start on there, Steve? Um, this is 120. Right. Yeah, I usually start on 40. <laughs> no, you don't, liar. <laughs> yeah, you didn't know you could get Don't us close at 120, that. Andrew. <laughs> you just start with a house break, do you, Andrew? <laughs> yeah. uh, Susie, the Swiss wood turner, Steve says, uh, Steve, can you tell yet? Can you tell yet what this would be? 
Well, this could be. Well, I don't know what it is. You know what I'm like with woods. If that's a piece of oak or pine or, you know, what I use for work, I'm fine. But this stuff, but it's very pretty. I will say that. It's a very pretty bit of wood. And he's, he's turning a bud vase. It's a bit bleached out, to be honest. So Let me see if I can help with these set. Get this a bit darker. Is it a bit of half, though, huh? I don't know what it is, to be honest, mate. It's very. That's a very light Didn't... piece of wood. Yeah, it looks nice. Didn't have any bark on it. Did you say there was a bit of chicken wire or something in it? Yeah, there was a bit of chicken wire in it, yeah. Yeah. I pulled the bark off. This is this is what the bark was. Let's have a look. That looks like cherry. That was a bit. So. Well, maybe get an idea when you put some sanding sealer or something on it. So Douglas Monglin's asking you two guys a question. He says, and uh, we'll go Andrew first this time. What was the best and the worst wood you've ever turned? The worst wood I've ever turned is monkey puzzle. And the monkey puzzle that I turned was just so thick with resin and it was like glue. And yep. also the, 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 when I was turning it down the spikes... They were they were lethal. So, and I made a hat out of the monkey puzzle. I still have it, and it looked nice when it was finished. But it was the first and last time I ever turned the monkey puzzle. Now I have got some monkey puzzle that's dry, and I'm planning on doing a a pre-recorded demonstration of it, in a, like a large ginger jar, to try and focus the eyes. You know what I mean? The, the knots in the monkey puzzle yes. so that they're all sequential. So the monkey puzzle was definitely the worst stuff that I've ever turned. The nicest wood I've ever turned, I think, was probably, it would have to be something like she-oak. I got a piece of she-oak given from a guy called Ronnie Barker when I demonstrated it down in, uh, it was down at, 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 it was Brian Flood's club. I can't remember the name of the club now, but it was down near London. And he worked, he had a friend who worked in Kew Gardens and he got this oak and it was like she oak and like had a cork on it. It was beautiful to turn. And it was all full of medullary rays. Gorgeous. Lovely. What about you, Pat? Uh, the worst wood, first of all, I suppose maybe after one Christmas, I tried to turn the Christmas tree to make use of it. <laughs> Don't do that with an artificial Christmas tree, folks. It won't work. <laughs> <laughs> it tends to melt a bit. Uh, the worst wood I suppose is any of the pieces that have tried to kill me I've had a couple I do some large turning sometime I haven't for a while and I have had a couple of pieces come off the lathe and it's a bit like uh, you could just imagine a small car coming in through your door rather fast yeah. this is me around the workshop but probably the nicest timber to turn for me is olive wood it's just such a beautiful wood if you can even get a small piece of it and try it I just think it's a beautiful wood to turn. Hopefully that answers that. Mark, the gentleman wood turner, he's, he's put on there, couldn't be magnolia. <laughs> That's, yeah. Actually, I've turned magnolia and it was quite nice to turn. Yeah, it's, it's very nice to turn. I think that's a yeah. little bit of a dig at me because I've, I've uh, been gifted a half, a half a magnolia tree, which was planted right. in 1927. So it was a big bit of magnolia. Yeah. I've got lots of it. It seems to be everything I turn these days is magnolia. I think that's what Mark's getting at there. Did you plant it yourself, Brian, that you're so familiar with the age of it? Yeah, I don't you start now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was actually a friend of mine. Her, her uh, grandmother planted the tree yeah. in 1927. So, so it's so nice when you get the history. Does it smell yes. like perfume when you're turning it? It, did, it doesn't smell like that. I, well, whether, uh, whether COVID has done my nose, I don't know. But right. uh, I can't smell anything when I'm turning. I don't didn't smell right. it. Right. All right. Oh, so I'm, going to bring you, I'm going to bring you guys back for a second. And then I'll, if Pat and uh, Andrew can show some of their bits, it'd be good. <gasps> you want to go first, Andrew? Well, the thing is, I, I, I was going to bring some stuff in, but it was absolutely bucketing down. I've got some photographs here. I'm hoping you, you might be able to see them from that. And I was going to share the screen, but then I realised you can't do it. So I've got I've got a, a photograph there. Get them hats. Let's have a look. Some hats. It's, yeah, I've got some hats on here. Uh, Andrew. 
I, I've never seen one of your hat turning demos, I'm afraid. Um, how thin you do you turn them hats? Well, they normally go down for a wearable hat. I'll take it down to about three millimetres. Three mil? Nice. Yeah, about three mil. And then um, a small hat like that, I might take it down to maybe two mil. But if I'm doing a demo, I make sure it's really wet and I go down to about five mil and then I don't go through the side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keep the inside smaller than the outside now. So I've got a, another one here. This is one of the... Corinthian helmets that I've made. So, you know whether you can see that or Yeah, that is a beautiful thing. That's lovely, that is. And, and then I've got a, this, this was a fun project. I turned the neck, but I actually made the body out of an old sideboard. And. <laughs> so you just have to have lying about you. <laughs> yeah, it was a, with a, a satin walnut sideboard. There we are, that's better. Yeah. And. It's got quite a nice sound to it, that one as well. In fact, that is the one that I use for the Wood Turner song that's on the, that, that I was going to do a screen share with it tonight for you, but for, unfortunately, for some reason, the, the iPad just will not screen share. So we'll have to try and see if we can overcome that. And then there's a the one here, just have a couple of blues balls. There's a nice olive ash one, and there's also a burr elm one there as well. As you can see, they're surrounded by border collie cushions. <laughs> yeah, I've we, have, that. We, we love our border collie. Because there wouldn't oh. be the odd border collie around your house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Andrew, I have some of your videos. Don't forget, maybe if Steve wants to hear some of your music at the end, I could share a video. Yeah. Oh, that would be good. Yeah, sure. Brilliant. That's a good idea. Yeah? Or maybe some of his bloopers. I won't do that. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's have that. That'll, that'll uh, be more interesting. You have to join us next week to see his bloopers. Oh yes, if you want to see you'll have to get a ticket for the, the seminar next week. So Andrew and believe you me, Andrew, there are plenty of them. Andrew, do you keep all your instruments you make or do you pass them on? I've, I've well I've probably made about thirty-five now since I started. I've sold a dozen. And the 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 ones that I've sold, I didn't make them to sell them. I made them to sell the training. Okay. And uh, because I wanted people to make their own blues balls, and I've had quite a number of students make them. And last year I did an online blues ball course. I'm planning on doing another one this year, and it was it was good fun. Yeah. But um, I've got at the moment I've probably got about twenty, and I made them really just to amuse myself. But then they became quite popular with the demonstrating and the and the teaching side. Yeah. So. But there's about a dozen that I've sold to musicians. Nice. Mainly folk musicians. Cool. All right, then, Pat, what well, you got to show us then, mate? Okay, I can show you some pictures, but I have to just turn off this green screen, and then I have to pop over here. Oh, that's backwards now, isn't it? Um, no, it's fine. No, it's fine. It's okay, it's okay. backwards on my screen. Anyway, so this is me, the Wood Turner, the sound next week, just to give you a quick idea of what's on. So you can see, I'll just name out the majority of the demonstrators really fast. I'm sure people will recognize most of them. But we've Andrew Hall, Harvey Moyer, Gary Lowe, Helen Bailey, Max Brozzi, Jimmy Clues, some Irish fella, Nick Agar, <laughs> Neil Turner, Richard Raffin, who's doing a, pr a presentation, not a demonstration, uh, Aaron Rad uh, Radish Hassis, if I could pronounce that correctly, uh, Kristen Gray is doing a photography, Ulf Janssen, Danny Flowers, Carl Byrne, who I mentioned earlier, Chloe Carl, and Fiona Sir, and um, Kirsty Dalton. So they are the people we have lined up. So I'll just give you a quick look at some of my work then. I won't uh, hug this on you. So that is a, a pine cone that I had made. And um, it's a texture that I had done on a couple of pieces. And a friend of mine, Kristen, that I mentioned doing the photography said, you need to make a real pine cone. So that was how that one came about. Just shout that you can see these, please, Andrew. Yeah, so that's yeah, pictures a, are good. Yeah, yeah that's same. fine. That's a cauldron. So I'm known for this kind of a rust finish, and I do a good bit of work with Chromacraft. So they wanted some of the boxes, so I popped a few of those together. Actually, not many people have seen this piece, so you're kind of getting exclusive on this one, Steve. Um, so that was uh, oh, I had a name and all on it. Now escapes me, but. Um, I turn these things about two mil. Well, actually a little bit more now because when I do the pyro carving, 
the can tend to burn away rather quickly, so I have to be careful. Um, this again is just a Chromacraft products on a spalted beach bowl. So some people are probably frowning at me for putting that kind of stuff onto a beach bowl. That's gorgeous. But that timber timber was at the end of its days, and I think it was a good save with with the beads and one thing and another on it. A uh, bit of lace wood, um, London Plain quarter saw on his lace wood, as far as I know. This is another piece of that same beach was on the end of its days, and this is what came oh, out of it. Oh, that. So this is it's very pretty. Yeah. So this how's that carved? Is that carved by machine, or have you done it all by hand? There's a, a lot of power carving on it with um, an arbitic. So basically the grooves are just cut either side of those uh, veins that you see, and then it's rounded around. And then the rim, if I show you back to the other one, the rim, sorry, I just slipped off there, one sec, clumsy fingers. So then you can see the rim is kind of angled down, and it just gives that illusion that it's all oh, yeah. curved up. So that's just that one. Um, this was part of my erosion series, so that one is about six inches in diameter. That's impressive. Um, some more rust finish. You see a lot of my work has this on it now. Um, I've been kind of, I'll never perfect the finish that I want, but I'm getting it to different levels. So you can see the noticeable difference in some of the pieces. That one there is about 12 inches tall and it was about 120 hours working that. My goodness. Um, this one here is about 12 inches as well. And there was nearly 200 hours in that for some reason. It, get the smaller opening getting in to do all the pyography on the inside as well so uh, i think i calculated on one line i was able to do a little bit of math on it and there's something like two and a half million times i touched that with a pyography pen so um this one was a bit of bit of fun called bank of fools so everything on that is made of timber um even the lock and this was just another picture of it there. Then I, I kind of moved into cogs and gears. So these are little guys you buy on Amazon and all sorts of things. And they're put on with a product called Powertex. And then I do the carving around it and one thing and another. These are my nuts and bolts for a bit of fun. Jeez. They just look like a... Um, yeah. They look real. They look real. They look real. They, look real. They, are, they are amazing. So yeah. they are actually made of beach. Um, that's just another... Um, there's a bit of a contradiction with some of this stuff and people say, oh, they love the green on the rust. Like, iron doesn't go green. Metal will go red, but rust is copper and brass that will go green. So yep. there's a bit of a contradiction in that. But anyway, it's just a bit of fun and it's a nice contrast. So this is uh, my first teapot I made. And then just the second and last one, this is that pine cone effect again that I just put on a hollow form that's about 9 or 10 inches tall. Then just back to the guys again. So that is very, what I have. Very here, nice, so. very nice pieces, mate. Thank so, you very much, and thanks for yeah, letting me share it there. So, so. What, what, yeah. to get the rust, what, what um, stuff do you use to get the rust effect, Pat? Um, I had been using a couple of different products, and um, I had been using the paint that I get in Northern Ireland, and you guys can get it in the UK called Porter's Paints. And they're, they're metals, and they'll do different types of effects. Uh, I've experimented with some of my own, getting some good results. We're using different, not chemicals as such, but iron filings and one thing and another. But uh, Chromacraft, hands down, is probably the easiest one to achieve, the easiest one to manipulate to get much different finishes. Um, it is available over with you guys now at Axi. It's not available in Ireland, so I have to get it directly from America. And what Andrew was talking about earlier there, the product for sealing it, I had a batch of it arrived here in Ireland in December and Customs decided to send it back for no apparent reason. So now I'm out of product. So it's fun getting anything like that here in Ireland, I can tell you. Yeah, I so. can imagine. Yeah, I tried to send some Chuck buddies over to Ireland and uh, because I didn't put the correct um, code on it, the Customs code on it, they sent it back. Yeah, TC codes. We have to do that in. No, what you simply do is just send it as a gift, Steve, and then you're. Yeah, it was a gift. It was a gift, but because I didn't have the code on it, the five digit code, they sent it back to me. Okay. So. Yeah, if I send it as a gift, I don't need a code, so it's fine. All oh, right. No, you have to. Uh, Royal Mail say it's got to have a code on it no matter what. But anyway, no, very nice pieces, sir. Very nice pieces. All right, let's get back to doing this then. Thank you. 
So, sand it up to 240 grit. I'm going to sand and seal it, then I'm going to Yorkshire grit it up to uh, 1,000 grit. That's the benefits of Yorkshire grit, Andrew. You don't have to sand it past 240 grit. Right. So, Mark has put the uh, the link in there for Chromacraft. Ah, cheers, Mark. If anybody wants to go and have a look at the uh, Chromacraft website. I'm just going to click on that because I really want to have a look at those. All right, so, settle those sand and seal. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, designer firewood part, right? Yeah. <laughs> expensive firewood, I have to say. Two dot coms there on the end of that one, but uh, it's just it's a preset thing in my text, but it's just me to woodturner.com if anyone wants more yeah. information about the event. Yeah, but look, uh, everybody's is a designer firewood. If it sits on the shelf and nobody wants to buy it, or, you know, you can only give away so much of that stuff as well. So, yeah. Even, even my friends share, shy away from the workshop now because I know I'm going to give them something. <laughs> Yeah, but the reality is, like, most of that stuff that I've just shown you there is completely completely impractical. It's completely useless. And if I leave it somewhere that the wind could blow it away, it's just going to break it. Yeah, and true. believe me, yeah. after that kind of hours of work, the last thing I want to see is something broken, and that has happened. So, <laughs> Yeah, I can imagine that break your heart. Oh, yeah. A lot of nice comments coming in about your stuff, guys. Really nice. Thank you very much. So Robert had said, a uh, question for you, Pat. What are you going to be doing over in the U.S.? Touring around doing demos, question mark? Yeah, I'm going to be doing some demos. I'm going to be doing some teaching, and I'm not going to be looking at a computer for a number of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God, he says. <laughs> uh, yeah, we were, talk we were talking beforehand about the... Uh, he spends, seems to be spending more time uh, working on a computer than he does turning. Yeah. Yeah, sir. Andrew will tell you, since myself and Andrew have been on the same path for the last two years, um, yeah. you know, Andrew, will you have a look at my cameras and then, it, you know, vice versa and check each other's sound yeah. and whatever. There's so much effort goes into the background of this, you know, and people don't realise that. Even, I'm sure, Steve today with checks and things for tonight, and even at that, the technology just plays silly buggers with him. Yeah, well, like I said, I lost all my... I had it dialed in pretty good, but I changed all my motherboard and for some reason, I lost all my OBS settings. I don't know how or why, but anyway, I did. So this week, I've spent all week trying to get them back to how they were, but obviously, I didn't quite succeed. But hopefully, we've got there now. Well, the beauty about the program that myself and Andrew use is called an Atom, an Atom Mini Pro. Yeah. We can save the files to it. And like I have a few presets for tonight because it's a presentation more than a demo, so I can just restore that file in a future one, and I'll have the, all of those pictures and things again. Yeah, good um, idea. I can change sound, I can change several things and just store them into it, so it's really good that way. Yeah. I, I didn't expect... <laughs> when you're only changing the motherboard, you, you know, all the information is on the hard drive. You don't expect to lose all that information as well. But never mind. Yep. You live and learn. Yeah. It's amazing how you only lose the good stuff off a of computer, isn't it? Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, only the stuff you need. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is with the, go, uh, the uh, ATEM and the, the cameras and everything like that, we're learning every single day. Yeah, that's correct. Yep. Yeah. OBS well, is Steve, the same. Steve's There's always updates coming. Yeah, oh. Steve's helped me a lot, and so has uh, Pete from Trusted Trees. And Mark the Gentleman Woodturner, they, they guys have helped me a lot get set up on my cameras and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, there is a question there again from Hodgepodge. He says, are you going to be anywhere near Texas? No, not going that far south. Uh, if I was going to Texas, I'd have to go down and see my good friend Wendy Nave. Unfortunately, I can't get down there this time. I, I put it out there on my uh, circular that I was doing a bit of travels, and a lot of people took me up on it, so I'm going to see as many as I possibly can. But I'm hoping now that the world has opened up, get back over a few times a year again, that'll be good. Yeah. So... It's just, it's a whole different world of wood turning over there. So I'm um, not saying it's any better. It's just the people, they're willing to spend more money for teaching and bringing in demonstrators and things, yep. you know, because obviously the larger population of one thing and another, uh, larger clubs, a uh, little bit more affluent too, for whatever reason. So, yep. So you can kind of understand why Jimmy and Nick went over there to, you know, further their businesses. Jimmy Clues and Nick Agar, that is anybody unfamiliar with him? Yep. Well, Lewis the Klondike Craftman says, those pieces make me feel like I didn't make the most. 
of my 24, you tried 25 years on the lathe. <laughs> look, there's there's a lot of that. Is, you know, people say, "Why? Well, how did you make that? You know, if you look at any piece that anybody has made, break it down, have a look and see what it is. Is it a vase? Yeah. Is it a bowl? If you take one of those vases that I have there, there's a ton of holes in it. So I just turned a tin wall piece, I cut holes in it, and then I pyroed it. And that's what it is if you break it down. So yeah. you know, it's like anything. You know, how do you eat an elephant bite by bite? So just yeah, one bite small at a time. Bit, small bit at a time and just work on that area at first and then just go on to the next one. Practice is the biggest thing of it all. If you're not spending a few hours a day, as we none of us really are, we're only hobbyists. And hence, you, you cannot be, you know, there's none of us here that I can see anyway that, that um, as proficient with a skew as Steve Jones because Steve is no. doing 40 hours a week. And unless brilliant. you were doing that Absolutely 40 brilliant. years, yeah. like he has a lifetime behind him. And I see his blood from his heritage of his granddad and before him again. So, And like, it's amazing to watch. And a lot of people with work and life haven't got the hours to spend on a piece. Yeah. No. Because uh, there's a there's a big thing, myself and Brian and a couple of other guys were talking about this a few weeks ago, there's a big thing on the internet thinking they watch somebody do a live and they think they can turn a bowl or a vase in an hour and a half. Um, and they people who watch it think they can do exactly the same. But it's not about the quality. It's not <laughs> there what you would do if you was doing it all on your own. But the other end of that too, Steve, is that some people will see, let's just mention David Ellsworth, for example. David will make these masterpieces of holoforms that he will spend, let's just say, 10 hours on it. He cannot make one of those in 90 minutes for you. So, yeah, you know, exactly. he can only do so much and show you techniques of it. So that's what you need to remember when you watch a demonstration is have a look at the techniques, not the finish item. Yeah. You're being shown some skills here, not just to complete finish item. So Yeah, no, I totally agree. Yeah, it's the skills that are important. The yeah. finished item, the finished item is the thing that comes out of the turner's head. Yeah, well, the, the, the skills are coming from their hands, so you need to watch their hands and make sure you you can pick up the skill, rather well, than worry about what the piece ends up as. Yeah, understand how they're working the tools, yeah. and, uh, learn how to use them, and then maybe you can produce what they're producing. So, yeah, yeah. No, going back to your question, Steve, about demonstrating that. When COVID first came in, obviously everything stopped. Yeah. All the demonstrating stopped. All of the teaching stopped. And for me, I, th I thought actually, I thought it's it's probably the end of my career as it was. But then I thought, well, Pat and I started talking. We started looking into the IRDs, didn't we? We talked about the cameras, the ATMs, and everything like that. And and I quite fancied the idea of doing the, the camera work. And I've actually got to the stage now where I'm actually enjoying it that much that I want to spend more time doing it. I worked oh. out, I've done I've done just over 800 demonstrations in the 20 years that I've been demonstrating and teaching. Right. And, and really, I would rather pursue the IRD route and the pre-recorded route than going back on the road again because that's the other thing as well. I don't know about anybody else, but I get, I'm getting awful tired with the driving. And there's yeah. that much many cars on the road that you can you can do a two-hour evening demonstration on an IRD, but you haven't got all of the stress of the driving to the club, and yeah. you're not loading your gear up. You, you know, you, it's 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 a huge difference in being able to deliver a presentation. Yeah, just walk out the bike That's door really into the yourself. Behind it. Yeah. And everything's there at your hand. It's another part I think a lot of people don't take into consideration, Andrew, the life of a demonstrator. Because I remember I said to Jimmy Clues when he visited me first over here, and I said, wow, well, Jimmy, you have a great lifestyle. He said, mate, if you like airports, you will love my life. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. people don't see that even in the UK, if Andrew has to drive from where Andrew is in Durham down to London, for example, yeah. he has a day's travel. He's a hours to set up for his demo and then he has to put everything back together he has a day's travel home and then he has to put his workshop back together so you might see 90 minutes of a demo but you don't really see what's going on in the background yeah. no no and it's the same with harrogate show i mean i've done 12 harrogate shows now and 
this year I'm really, really looking forward to going as a delegate. Because when you do a Harrogate show, you go there on a Thursday, you set up, and then by the time you're all set up, when you're walking out of the show, all you see is tarpaulins covering yep. everybody else's exhibition, you know, or all of the yep. trade stands. And then that's all you see when you come in on the morning, so you don't actually see anything. And and I've missed that, and, and I'm really looking forward this year to being a, de- a delegate and seeing things. Because mm. they are hard work, these shows, because you're on high alert from the minute that door opens and people coming in. You're trying to demonstrate, you're trying to talk to people, answer questions, ensure everything is right, they're being safe, secure. Yeah. And then, you know, it is so mentally draining at the end of that day, so... It is, but the great, the, I've thoroughly enjoyed doing what I'm doing, but sometimes you get to the stage where you just want to do something different. I think that's general yeah. life, though. I think anything you do, you get to the stage when you've been doing it for such a long time. You yeah. do, you do. I mean, you and I, were too, when we were doing the, with Pat last night, when we were doing the, the sound and audio check, you were saying yourself that, you know, there's been times when you wanted to change your career path. Yeah. Uh, all the time, all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, but don't be a good turner, Steve. There's no money in it. Oh, I could never afford. I've got a high maintenance wife and kids. I'll never be able to <laughs> re- retire on wood turning. <laughs> Douglas Mungham has just put a question in the chat. He says, "IRB?" Question mark. Question mark. Yeah. Interactive. Interactive, interactive remote. remote demonstration. And, and is, again, Douglas. getting back to what Pat was saying, you know, the ninety minutes that you've got available to yourself to be able to show how to produce something, the techniques and the finish and the the shape and everything like that. 90 minutes is not a long time. But if you're doing a pre-recorded one, it's amazing how much information you can actually get over yeah. in 90 minutes with a pre-recorded demo. Yeah. And if you're there and you're live at the demo, like, like next weekend, I mean... <sighs> The information that people are going to receive next next weekend is just unbelievable because the demonstrations are pre-recorded, but the demonstrator is there live to answer all the questions, like we are now. It's just like but, we are now. And, but the amount of information that's contained within that 90 minutes is probably the same as what you would see in a full DS demo. We do have live demos as well, so... We do, yeah. we do. But uh, what so, I'm saying is the, the, there's so much learning... The available for that particular opportunity, isn't it, Pat? Oh, whatever, do yeah. Uh, somebody asked a question there just before it disappears about do I use the V cut on the Fordham? Um, I do use the flexi cut V thing on I, the Fordham that I have. There's a dual hand pieces. There's one for just um, rotates, and the other one is pneumatic. But I do also use the, it's a very old Axminist or Flexi shaft that I put the, the V grooves into when I'm carving. So, yeah. Yes, yeah. In uh, answer to your question, yes, I do use it. Yeah, it, it's a whole different world now with the virtual. And what a lot of clubs are doing now is embracing the fact that you can have people still attend the club and stream in a demo from anywhere in the world. Okay, yeah. So, that. That means that it's a jolly boys outing and females, of course. I don't want to get in trouble here. <laughs> yeah. But you know, everybody can watch that uh, top end demonstrator in their own club and interact with them. That's crazy. Okay. So, you know, with, with COVID here, you still can't shake hands anyway. So, <laughs> no, yeah, that's yeah. true. And um, Steve? Yes. Jennifer's asking uh, Steve, have you drilled halfway through that bus? Yeah, I drilled for it. Nice. She must have missed it. Which is just there's too much Baileys, that's what it is. Yeah, too, too many Baileys, yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. So you guys are all geared up then for next weekend, everything's ready to go? Uh, well, we're <laughs> nearly there. <laughs> we still, we still yeah. practice in that. We are, maybe. Don't I, jinx it, don't jinx it. <laughs> I've, I've literally just put up to uh, one more video to put up tomorrow and um, it has to be edited and that's going up on the platform carol has the platform almost built out and he has made it so simple and user friendly so anybody that comes into it and we even have videos for you to watch just to show you how to use it in preparation right. for it so yeah it's there's no way uh, you don't have to read a load of crap to click here click there just watch this few minute video and it'll show you 
how to use it. But, yeah. All right. Just send this up to 400 and that'll be far enough. So I'll just click, put the link in again for that. Yeah, I've just gone, I've just started going to my local wood turning club and we had this discussion not last, last month, no, not this month, last month about remote demos and they go, no, it's not the same as having a person on the lathe. And I said, no, I totally agree. I said, but you can get them for cheaper or not cheaper, but better cost. You ain't got to pay for accommodation and traveling and this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. And there's like, because in my club, it's uh, 95% people between the age of 60 and 80. There's not hardly any youngsters there. They're like, they're not with the times. Yeah. They're all like, um, so, uh, it's got to be done by manual and this, that, and the other. Like, okay. Can you field that question there from Robert Putt from Hodgepodge Woodworks? Yeah. Um, is the event going to be run through the same system as the World Worldwide Wood Turning event a few months ago? No, it's not. That was Zoom Events, which was almost a trial platform, and the guys were kind of left in the lurch with that. So I know people had hiccups with that. But we are using a high-end platform from Vimeo. It's a business platform from Vimeo. It's not your ordinary run of the middle. So with Zoom and these other platforms, things are being broadcast at 720. We're going out at, at, at I believe, 1080. So it's going to be high-quality videos. So the only issue is if you have a bad picture, it's down to your own device. We are putting out really good quality videos on this. Um, interaction with the demonstrators will be done in the very same simple manner of a chat box. Uh, we even have some music in the interludes from a, a wonderful lady by the name of Fiona Sir from Ireland. Uh, she's a world-renowned artist with traditional music and all sorts. And then we have, of course, as I said, the talk with Richard Raffin. Uh, a lot of people interested in that one to hear Richard. It's not going to be uh, an interview per se. Um, I'm, as I described, I'm going to poke the bear. I want Richard just to let loose a little bit. And, of course, then we have the photography. Anybody wants to improve taking pictures of your work, Oh, yeah. Some really good hints from Kristen in this. Um, she's a brilliant photographer, so that's going to be really good. Yeah, I could do with some lessons. <laughs> yeah, because there, there's too many people who make such fantastic work. And I know Steve has just left that on the lead, but you're, they're just so interested in getting that picture up on social media for the few likes and shares and things. They've forgotten to just declutter the background and maybe just a white piece of card, even a pillowcase. And then you will transform that piece into a yeah. wonderful picture, and a wonder the work will just be justified. Then, yeah, so totally agree. Just, a picture, a, 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 like like I like I've been told before, a picture can either make or break a piece. Yeah, yeah. But the other part of you know, um, if anybody was on when we had Gordon Pembridge on Eat the Wood Turner, Gordon is a fine artist, as in painting and Wood Turner. He makes very thin bowls and uh, he pierces and decorates them and they're just masterpieces. Now, these things are thousands upon thousands of dollars. But um, as, as Gordon said, the likes on Instagram and Facebook is just insidious. People just live for these likes and all that you're doing is just falling into these algorithms for your work and you're letting your work become second to the likes. And it's a shame that people just put Facebook likes above the quality of their work just to get it up there um yeah so you know just i think we're all victims i think we're all well, victims I, of that pat we are a bit yeah the youtube community is a, is a bit like that but yeah. i've just put in the, the <coughs> meet the wood turners.com so that'll take you to the page where you can sign up for tickets etc etc yeah just so meet the wood turner to... live type that into google you will find us or just go to my website pack car wood turning there's a drop down there as well in the meet the wood turner tab it's everywhere so um we are kind of you know i just mentioned about facebook we are flooding it there so just to keep people interested and up to date with what's going on so and another thing that we really push this time as well is we are getting the youth involved so we have some young turners there's a young lady there by the name of danny flowers maybe some of you will know her Wow, did she put an effort into her presentation, and it's really good, um, and the quality of her pictures. And because I edited it for her, she took so many numerous shots from different angles. It was a bit of a headache to put it together, but I had to admire the amount of work that she put into it. Yep. Um, and that young chap I mentioned, Aaron Madish Hassis, I believe his name is, he's from Scotland. He's doing a collaboration with Carol Byrne. The two of these... 
this kid is only 18. I think it, not like, even 18 has an RU Watkin as well. And it's a gigantic machine. And just to see the cleanliness and how lovely this machine looks, yeah. uh, it's just wonderful to see it. So that's going to be fun. Andy's got a lovely border collie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, well, that, that makes all the difference, Andrew. I'll bring, I'll bring you guys back. All right. So there you go, my simple little bud vase. Like I said, it weren't about me tonight. There you go. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice, Steve. Yeah. Put that for Christmas for the missus, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, you, you should be so lucky and get away with oh, that. Oh, I wouldn't get away with that, believe me. Not a chance. And listen, and listen, it was a 24 karat gold row sitting at the top of it. <laughs> yeah. So, will you both be going to Harrogate this year? I'm going. I'm definitely I'm going definitely to Harrogate. I'm definitely going to Harrogate, yeah. yeah. I was going to go to Makers, but I think I've changed over. my mind for Makers because. Makers is more for the YouTube community, in my opinion. Uh, opinion than Harrogate's more for the wood turner. That's my. That's the way I feel. Anyway, right. um, I think. Um, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of good people at um, Maker Central, but if I get a chance to go, I'll go. But at the moment, I'm I'm not I'm not urgent to go. If that makes sense. Yeah, I'm definitely I've, heading I've, for Harrogate. I've never been myself, so... No, I, I find that when I went to Makers, Makers is more designed for the YouTube community rather than the wood turners, because you get all different types of Makers at Makers. Um, yeah, Makers at Makers. Mm. Um, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of wood turners there as well, but it's also a lot of other stuff as well, which is nice to see. But I'd rather, with work being so busy this year, I'd rather have the time off to go to Harrogate than Makers. Yeah, yeah. Yorkshire Grit says he is a stand at Harrogate. He does. He does indeed. Hey, Lynn. So, yeah. But if I, get, I, might, we, we might, we might see you sometime in summertime, Pat, maybe. Yeah, I have a couple of trips planned over there as well. Oh, no, we, we have a trip. Years. We have a trip. The four of us are coming south. Oh, are you travelling with Lynn? Yep. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> There may be trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I have heard of this. I haven't seen Glenn in a couple of years now, actually. So, yeah. Be good to see him and Joe. He ain't changed a lot. Shh, don't say anything. Joe's not coming. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> quiet. Don't worry, Joe. I will tell you everything he does because Ireland is a small place. I will know exactly what to get up to. That <laughs> <laughs> uh, should be interesting. Yeah, be good. So, Roy's the boys going to Harrogate. That'd be good. Yep. There's quite a few. I think quite a few of the Wood Tunnel community will turn up at Harrogate, I think. Yeah. Or I the think, YouTube I think, Wood Tunnel community, and let's put it that way, like that. I think Harrogate is going to be a huge event this year, more so than normal, because people want to get back out. And it is kind of, I think, is it the largest one of the year, Andrew, isn't it? It is, yes. it is yeah. 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 So, I think that. Like it's fantastic since they moved into that new venue as well. So there's something like five to seven thousand people go through the doors a day. I think they're going to exceed that this year. So uh, I would get your tickets. So Terry from TJ Sunny, he's he's I'm going as well, Pat. He says he's coming over as well. As is Pete yeah. from Twisted Trees. Is that TJ Berkeley? Is it? No, it's T Terry. Terry Bray. He was in earlier. Remember. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no. There's there's young TJ. I think that he's a, another kid. I'm, I see him on a lot of these, and wow, what he's doing at his age. I'd love to see the younger people getting going yeah. at this. Yeah, it's good to see youngsters coming in. Definitely. Yeah. Well, remember, yeah. all those old fogies won't be lasting that much longer. We need these young fellas to replace us. And I think so. the good thing is with the younger generation, <laughs> they've got new ideas as well. They got fresher ideas because they bring they bring yeah. a lot they bring yeah. a lot of tech into it as well. Because a lot of the younger generation are all tech conscious, aren't they? So they they bring all the new technology into it as well. So that's yeah. good. Uh, on saying that, Steve, uh, I've seen, watched Richard Raffin's videos he's been putting up on YouTube there. It's actually refreshing to watch him just doing those videos. And I would call that raw as you can get, because, you know, it's, it's brilliant in some of these where people are doing the graphics and the skills with sharing screens and all that. It can make it interesting, but just to watch Richard in the raw format, I really enjoy watching him like that. You know, he has a little cut on his hand and one, and there's no need for a plaster or a band-aid. He just cracks on with it. It's just, yeah, it's refreshing just to see that raw element of yeah. it again. People on site always say, Mick, I mean, because I always carry super glue in my, for, in my tool bag, which is my first aid box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, super glue. Well, that, that stopped yeah. most things. 
And plasters fall off anyway, so. Yeah. Masking tape and uh, electrical tape are best plasters of the model. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. Definitely. So, has anybody else got any more questions for Pat and Andrew before we uh, knock it on the head? It's been a good night, guys. You've had some good questions. So I appreciate your time. Thanks very much for the invitation. Yep. Yeah, and thanks very much for giving us the opportunity to share out about oh. our work and uh, absolutely the yeah. we're involved in. So really appreciate that, and thanks to everybody for the questions and your input. Hope we didn't bore you. Well, I'm speaking for me. I hope I didn't bore no, you. No, we didn't bore us at all. That was in, uh, very interesting. It was interesting to see your uh, oh, you see the pieces you both made. I never look for Andrew's video. You'll have to just bear with me for a minute. No, you, we have you time. And, there, we'll, we'll talk about something else while you're there. Okay, just bear with me and I'll find you, Andrew, and I better make sure it's the right one, Andrew. So, uh, Mark Jim Woodturn has just put a, a list of www.tradefairs.com, which obviously gives a list of where things are happening. Andrew, will I put up the one with you and Tony? Which one are we singing? Um, bring it on home. Yeah, you can do that if you want. Yeah, that'll do, he says. Go you, on. as long as there's no nudity or anything people don't want to see, Andrew, you know yourself. <laughs> yeah. We get this up here, Sharon. Jared the French wood turner says, uh, Glenn, there's a table booked for you and Brian at the pub. Oh, mm. Jared is a chef in a restaurant in Cork. I know Gerard well. How are you, Gerard? Right, so you say when, Steve, and I'll see if I can do this for you. Okay, whenever you're ready. Because I don't, well, I give people a chance to type a chat uh, question if they want to then. There okay, so uh, I've started to share, so can you see that? Uh, no. Yeah, yes, I can. I can see it on Skype, but I can't see it on the YouTube stream. Right, well, yeah, give it, saying the two, go to okay. YouTube. You just give it a few oh, seconds there. Oh, I'll press play when it's come up. And I can if there's back, I'll shut off my mic here, okay? So I can still see Pat in the US, U, UBS, OBS stream. Yeah. I can see it on Skype, but it's not on the YouTube part. Okay, well, I, I clicked it into the Skype because I presumably it was going to come up through there. So sorry about this. No, you need to bring it, on, bring it on your feed, mate, like you did your pictures. No, that won't work. It won't bring in videos into that. Worry, I, I the people can see it on you. If they just look at Andrew Hallwood, uh, there's quite a few different songs if they want to have a quick look. Just, give me, just um, give me one second. Just give me one second. Let's have a look. There is the Wood Turner song on the YouTube. Steve, if you want to have a look at that. Hang on a second. I don't know if I can... Andrew Hall, Woodtongue. Yeah. Again, technology is marvellous when you know what you're yeah, doing. Yeah, no, that's, that's just bringing you in as you, Pat. You, you're you're no, sharing right. it in Skype, aren't you? So that won't... That won't yeah. yeah, I thought it would replace me no. here. Um, the Atom won't stream live. Not the Atom. I have won't stream live videos. Um, no. I super source on it, and I don't no. have that. Not to worry. But I say, um, go over and check out... Um, That's a shame, I want to see that. Go over and check out Andrew's YouTube channel. He's got loads on there, I would imagine. Yeah, there's quite a few different songs. In fact, if you look on some that's been done from a place called Thor Paul, there's some songs with the wine box. Did you put um, Andrew's uh, YouTube channel in? I'm just looking, I'm just getting a link here next to you. No, I'm trying it's, to find it's, it. it's not working, Pat, I don't think. No, I've turned it off, Andrew. It's not going to come through. I thought that my image that was coming up here, I could replace it sharing yeah. the screen. But no, it's only working in Skype. Yeah. It's, this is new territory for me. I haven't used Skype in years since my daughter's in Australia, so. What's Mark just put in? Mark's just put something in. That's Mark put the link in. Did he find it? I think, I think that one there must be all of the stuff on there, Pat. Because we've got we've got the details and the hat size and blues ball and everything like that on there. On which Andrew? We're looking at your screen with the turquoise box, a day in the life platter experiment. Oh, okay. It must be all the stuff that you've got for next weekend. There's the return on the show. Yeah, that's on, on Skype. We're saying that. Yeah, there you go. On Skype. That's it. We're back now. Okay, sorry That's about right. that. As long as it didn't go live, you're all right. I don't want people seeing your private stuff. <laughs> uh, don't worry, just as I say, if you don't want anybody to see it, don't put it on the computer. Well, this, so that's my goal. 
Not that I've any <laughs> <laughs> network here at all. Ben, Ben, Ben's got a question there. Is there any videos on Make the Wood Turner for timber preparation, cutting up and drying? Yes, a day in the life. I've done a one called a day in the life. And it actually takes into consideration cutting the timber, and it's a wind blown ash, and I'm showing how to prepare it and turning it into hot blanks. I also have an IRD on my um, yeah. RD recordings on my website of timber harvesting for anybody unfamiliar with cutting wood and getting the most from the, the log itself. So that's there. Um, they are a pay per view just before anybody says it's not free. It's 10 euros for two weeks to watch it um, as many times as you want. So, But it's a really, really good demonstration if you want to know how to prepare your wood for your, your lathe. I've seen it. Yeah, we we just try to um, when everything shut down, we try to make a few quid back um, with our IRDs, basically, and one thing and another. So, but unfortunately, technology way outweighed the, <laughs> the <cost. laughs> money that was made, the cost of the technology. Yeah. Because uh, what also happened, and I'm sure anybody that's in this line of work will know, when COVID hit, technology prices shot through the roof because the demand for all the cameras. Uh, Logitech and all those guys were just laughing their backsides off at everybody because of just double prices, yeah, basically. Yeah, Logitech. I remember looking at Logitech 920s and they'd gone from like 45 quid up to like 130 pound overnight. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Even now, they're still up in the 60s if you go to the wrong places. Yeah. And then it was availability. You just exactly that. Exactly that. Yeah. Um, yeah, but, you know, I mean, things if you want good pictures, you've got the good cameras, haven't you? You I mean, I tried the cheaper cameras. And the color variations, the picture quality wasn't good. You know what I mean? People say, oh, they got the same Cosmos chip in them. They might have, but they're not, the, the, they don't work as well as the, the Logitech cameras. Well, it's like just because BMW bought Skoda, you're not driving a BMW when you're in a Skoda. Nice car still, don't get me wrong. But exactly that, Pat. Exactly. I learned my lesson. I spent a fortune on being recommended webcams that were supposed to be full HD, 4K, blah, 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 and the picture quality. Don't get me wrong, the picture quality was good, but it wasn't what you'd expect from a high-quality camera. Um, I've now got Logitech's all around other than one, and the picture quality is guaranteed every single time, which is what you want, hassle-free. Come in there, click the button, that's there. Um, you don't want to be messing around all the time, do you? Once you? Like you said earlier, once you've got it set, you want to keep it set. Yeah, you can spend you do. fifty pounds, fifty euros, or you can spend ten thousand. Um, it's up to you what you want to get out of it. Yeah, exactly. So it depends on the line of work you're in. Yeah. But it's okay buying all these expensive cameras. You also have to have the broadcasting unit capable of transmitting signals and yeah. all from this stuff. It's not just a matter of buying the most expensive camera, plugging it into your computer, and it's going to work. It just doesn't work like that. And also your internet speed as well. If your internet speed is not good enough. Then um, yeah. I don't know how much you spend on PC cameras, equipment, and whatever else. Absolutely, that ain't going to work. You mean yeah. Brian struggles now and again, don't you, mate? Don't I? Don't I? Don't I know it? <laughs> so, yeah, sometimes it gets a bit slow. But we were actually told at the start the hardest part of this is the sound and the light. And as people would have witnessed at the start here, and Steve had a couple of issues with the sound, and it yeah. is really hard to get the sound and light right. The picture is actually the easiest part of it, believe it or not. So yeah. I've gone now to put my cap, my light in either end of the lathe. I used to have it above and it was always whitewashed out and looked horrible. But now I've moved it so I'm flood filling rather than direct lighting, which works out a lot better. It, it doesn't matter that we as the demonstrators can see once the attendees can see. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's it. Yeah, that's exactly. A, that's exactly. Right. So Mark's put in a link there to uh, Andrew's channel and I put in a link the Wood Turner song. Anybody wants to go and have okay. a look at them? Thank you. Right, so if nobody's got any more questions, I'll give you, I'll give you another minute to put your questions in, and then we'll happy start. to hang around anyway, Steve. So no oh, that's fine, here, that's so. fine. If as long as you guys are happy to hang around. Yep. So what's what's your plans for next week, then, Steve? What turning wise? Um, don't know yet. I ain't thought that far. I said to you last night. I ain't thought about today until. <laughs> when, when's your next day, of worms? Oh, um, <laughs> we 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 do this once a month. So right. the next one right. will be in April. That's Phil Irons in April. Uh, oh, so okay. Phil's coming on in April. And then April, Good. May, we've got Terry from Chestnut coming in in May. Uh, he's going to talk about his weekender. 
and and yeah. I can't remember who's on after that. But we've I've got nearly all the year logged up now, so it's good because it's nice because um, I'm messaging people and we're getting people booked in ready through the month, so it's nice. And like you guys, it's nice for you guys to come in. I do really appreciate the time you you, you spend with us. That really does you know mean a lot. And yeah, the uh, it's rest nice of us to appreciate it too. Exactly, and that's nice for these guys to get to ask you some questions that they perhaps never would get to ask you because if you even when you're a demo. You're busy. You can't just drop everything and talk to one person because you've perhaps got 50 yeah. people watching you. Yeah. So, no, but I like to say I do the airworm once a month. We have the quiz once a month as well. We do a quiz. Um, yeah. That, that'll be on the, that's on the 25th of this month, I think, the quiz. And nice. then um, we're doing a live demo at two o'clock in the morning for the States as well on the 26th. So, that'll be. Oh, we did cool. one last month, was the first one, wasn't it, Brian? It was um, indeed, and it was very good. Very, very. Yeah, I, it was I a good turned, one. Yeah, I, t I turned. Um, I turned this piece. This is what I turned. Piece of you with some red resin in it. So uh, as that it was, was our first void in it, so we uh, filled it with resin. Yeah, so it was good, but um, nice. it's nice because it's we get we're, we're doing it for the people overseas because obviously when we go out at this time of night, that's either the middle of their day or. Early hours the following uh, morning. So, William Kenny's asking a question there. He says uh, it's probably for Pat. Uh, are there any demos coming up in the southeast of Ireland? Um, I have been asked about getting back teaching and one thing and another here. I'm not planning on doing it until I get back from America this oh, year okay. in later April or April or May, I should say. But uh, I, I generally run a workshop here or something like what Steve was talking about here once a month in my own workshop. But whether I get back to doing that or not, so just a good few things planned, and I don't know whether I want to schedule that just yet. But if you're ever in the area, just drop me an email. Um, yep. Roy's asked the question. Thanks for that comment as well, Gary. Gary's saying that you know it's just a it's not a question, but a comment on how grateful it is for the newbies like himself to appreciate the time and effort. Very welcome. Please yep. enjoy it. So Roy's asked a question. Can you remember the first thing you ever turned? I could remember the first thing I turned, but I only started two years ago. You guys have a bit more trouble, I would think. Paper scraper handle. Paper scraper handle. <laughs> yeah, for me, mom. Excellent. Oh, because you start when you was fourteen at school, didn't you? Yeah. 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 I'm going to call mine a missile because I pulled it off the lathe and it just passed me by. So, yeah. <laughs> <It's> a, <laughs> it's a, it's a so, Still hasn't yeah. found it yet. <laughs> one, of my, one of my very best learning uh, stories when I started out was um, I had this wonderful old dog that she used to love playing with a tennis ball and she would bring it into the workshop and drop it up on the bed of the lathe when I would be, you know, like a, a guy on a rodeo trying to chisel this lump of wood do something yeah. with it and uh, there was one night she came in and she dropped the ball up between the bedways and a piece of wood came out of the lathe and just missed both of us and she went running out through the dog flap in the door <laughs> so I just allowed right okay this is the norm with this because it's happening so frequently so I put the piece of wood back into the lathe the dog came back in and I was trying to turn again and drop the ball on the lathe and with that she ran out and I just stopped the lathe to look around to see what was wrong with her. And as soon as I stopped the lathe, the piece of wood just fell out with it off the lathe again. I hadn't got it in the chuck right. So the dog knew better than <laughs> I did by the sound. Oh, this is going to happen again. I'm <laughs> I'm off. Yeah. So, Safety dog. So it, <laughs> Smart I, dog. I know it's, a, it's funny when I say it, but at the same time, it did actually teach me to listen yes. as well as look. You know, the sound is a very important part of what you're doing, especially if it's holoforms. Mm. When you can't see what's going on in there, the sound plays such an important part in your in the work. So use all your senses, folks. If you can't see it, you need to listen to it. So, so does your does your dog in the, come in the workshop with you, Andrew? Yes. Yeah. She uh, she tends to follow me around all over. To be yeah. honest, she's she's a very faithful. Now, dog. I do see a lot of your yeah. Facebook posts where you you take the dog out for a walk. Oh yeah, yeah. My, my. we we had two. We had a brother, but sadly we lost him last May, and because uh, we got the, obviously we got little mates, and but since she seems to be even more sort of clingy yeah. since we lost them, but I can imagine it's it's it's, too, it's understandable because I mean 
for a dog, what is it, seven years for a dog? She was with him for, for eight years, you know what I mean? So it's a long time mm -hmm. to be together. Were they, were they brother and sister or were they from two yeah. different... Yeah, they were brother and sister, little mates, yeah. Steve. Yeah. Brian, yeah. have you got Pat's channel link? Pat hasn't got a YouTube channel, have you, Pat? Pat hasn't you? got a YouTube channel. I have a YouTube channel, and to be honest with you, there's not much on it. There's a few promos from me to Wood Turner. Um, my website is where most of my stuff lies. I don't do the videos. I put a promos on it, I think, for the forum. But, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, me to Wood Turner. Your stuff's on Vimo, isn't it? Yeah, and that's all. It's um, it's encrypted into it for to yeah. go back on the website. But um, the Meet the Wood Turner live meetings, by the way. Now, not don't confuse this with next week's event as a pay per view. But our Meet the Wood Turner live that we do alternate weekends that is a free meeting to attend. It's similar to what Steve is doing yeah. here. Um, so like we've had everyone, Nick Agar, David, as Andrew, um, and there's so many other names to come. And we don't look at as in a tiered level of the top demonstrator and the bottom. Everybody is the same on it. We treat everybody the same. So because everybody is the same as far as we're concerned. And it's just brilliant to hear the people's life stories and the wood turning career. So um, if you've never been to one, try and make one. Um, if you go to my website, Packard Wood Turning, up at the top of it, you will see Meet the Wood Turner. Just click on it. There's a subscribe and it's free. You will get all of the information about upcoming events and things if you're not happy with it just unsubscribe it's not costing you a red cent we do run on a donation basis where we raffle out um andrew has given us skill builders we raffle those out we raffle out tickets to my irds we always have one from cindy drozda recently we had one to meet the wood turner and we have ones for the alaska symposium that's another event virtual event people are interested in there's myself phil irons glenn lucas Jack's Versary, and oh my God, I think I'm forgetting someone else. But anyway, it's another virtual event. If you just look up at Askin Wood Turning Symposium, um, and I don't believe these things are overly expensive for the content that you're getting. So the way we keep saying on Meet the Wood Turner, we're trying to support the people who have lost so much through COVID with their employment, their work, their sales. Um, and without being disrespectful to anyone, hobby turners are having a huge impact on these people that are making their living from it because there's so much available on Etsy and, and different things. And to be honest with you, a lot of the public don't see the difference in an Andrew Hall bowl and maybe someone who's just doing it at the weekends where Andrew is maybe making his living from it. So we're trying to do our best to promote everyone, hobbyist and professional, but we're trying to give everyone a fair slice of the cake here. I agree. And I think also another thing to remember as well about the Meet the Wood Turner, there is an archive for Meet the Wood Turner as well, which is, is it's was it 25 euros, isn't it? Yeah. Not yeah. To watch there. And, you know, so if there's anybody specific there that you think, oh, I wouldn't have minded seeing and hearing about their lifestyle, you can't actually get um, Meet the Wood Turners that have already taken place for a small fee. And again, it helps. It really just helps to keep it going, doesn't it, Pat? Well, to be honest with you, when this started out, I made a point of asking people what they wanted. And they said, OK, can you get the meetings recorded? And I said, no, because it's people's intellectual property and I don't want to be messing with it. So then I pursued it and our guests agreed to it. And I would sign and get an agreement for them because I just have to cover my own back on this. And they were happy enough to let us use that <laughs> much to be quite honest. Um, so then we did it for, you could view everything in there for a month and that's 15 euros. So that was used once or twice. But what we're doing also on Meet the Wood Turner, if you buy a ticket to our event next week, you will have access to archives that's there. Now, in the early days, some people didn't want, it was one person didn't want to use the recording, but some of the earlier guests were not recorded, but the majority of them, are there and there's some really good stories in there so meet your hero as they say you might see the person that you want but you can check it all out for free just go to the website the list of names is there so yeah good very good and it's good nice to see people how people started because um yeah you mean i was when we had les on the other week i thought he actually started off as a production turner 
but I thought he was a hobbyist turner, then going into production turner, but he didn't. He started off as a production turner, which opened my eyes a little bit because, like I say, I thought he started off as a hobbyist. But no, it's nice to yeah. hear people's story. And when you look at the, then you, a lot of people don't realise that Les came from the Gary Rant stable, mm. you know, and some of the younger people may not know who Gary was, and then yep. to hear about another top class professional turner, you know, yeah. so it's, yeah. you know, Gary is known for making pepper mills and seven cuts, and you know, if you count seven cuts, that's not very many on a piece with spindles, no. so, no, definitely not. you know, to see these people in action, again, production turners, they have to do it to make the bread and butter to survive, so... Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you talked about the spindle turner earlier on, you know, and uh, I mean, Steve is probably he's the best skewmaster I've ever seen yep. in my life. And, and I think for me, his Meet the Wood Turner was one of the most fascinating evenings we had. And he's a really shy man. He doesn't normally do anything like this. And Pat, for him to come on to do that, that was like really stepping out of his comfort zone, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, now his meeting isn't in the archives because that was a different setup. But um, yeah, and it did take a bit of coaxing. And <laughs> yeah. part of the thing I have to do, I kind of have to live with people for a few weeks beforehand almost. But the view, I do know a lot of these people personally, which I'm really honoured and lucky to know a lot of these people. I've met them on my travels over the years and they've been in Ireland. So yeah, so I call in favour sometimes too. And uh, People who know these people will send a question over for me. My email might get overlooked, but theirs won't be, and then I might get the response that they will do it. So, lucky in that sense to know a few people. So, but don't you find? Yeah. I, I find that you I mean when I started this special guest there, up, I found that some cheeky emails or some cheeky text messages or messages, whatever. Most people were obliged to help. They wanted to come on. They wanted to tell this story. I've had a few who don't want to because of the same reasons, like Andrew said. They're, that's not their scene. They're not really in the YouTube, into the YouTube thing. But people in the chat asked them for me to ask, so I can ask. You know, that's all I can do. Um, but sometimes I find that you guys, you professional turners, you are so curious and you're always obliging and always willing to help the younger and the, the novice turners, which I really appreciate. Like, well, yeah, I appreciate I just, that, I just want to clarify something. I do not see myself as a professional turner because for me, a professional turner has to be proficient in many disciplines of wood turning, and many of us aren't. So I would never profess to be a professional turner. I call myself a serious hobbyist. That's what I call myself. So, um, All right, so I don't have let's change it. Experience then. Let's go for experienced. Yeah, okay. A <laughs> little, little bit of experience, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Right. So are we all finished? Is everybody finished asking their questions? So loads I think of so. we've still got we've still got sixty people watching, mind you. I know it's amazing. So there's some really nice comments yeah. coming in saying, "You guys, you know, thanks for sharing your knowledge and your comments and this that, and the other. I really do appreciate it. And everybody in the chat does the same, I think. Yep, I appreciate it, and I love to hear your guys' stories and see the see the work you've produced. Gorgeous. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Ray. Well, excellent, guys. Well done. Next time we get Andrew on, we'll get him playing in the corner. Yeah. Thanks, Mont Andrew. You have, to, you have to get him on a day when it's not raining so you can go and get some stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, anyhow, thanks again. It's been a, a very pleasant I'm day. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thank you, Andrew. Andrew. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you too, Pat. For sitting in and watching as well. Thanks, folks. Thank you very much. Right. So, we're going to knock it out. You two guys hang around for a couple of minutes. We're going to close this. Right. Okay. So thank you all for coming over and joining us. A massive thank you to Pat and Andrew. And obviously a massive thank you to Brian and Terry as well. Even though Brian decided he wanted to, he'd rather have a G&T rather than being with us. But hey-ho. <laughs> no, that was Terry did that. I'm still oh, here. Oh, yeah, Terry. Sorry. The old one, Terry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, guys, I'll see you Sunday. Thanks for coming over and watching. Hope you have a great weekend. Speak to you soon. Take care and bye for now. Bye. Good night. Bye, everybody. I'm really the end of it. That's all, folks.